Hi everyone, I'm the Rum. And I'm the Wine. We're an expat couple living here in Dublin, Ireland for the past four years now. We make videos about what it's like moving to Ireland and also give you little tidbits or for some of the challenging things and not so challenging things you should know. So much so that we do have our own resource. Down below you'll find a course that we put on Udemy. Yes, what this course is all about is a quick, concise, everything you need to know about moving to Ireland, some of those challenges, some of the easy stuff, being acclimatized, all that sort of stuff. So if you're really serious about thinking about moving and just want all those facts and tidbits, yeah, that's the course for you. So for today's video, we're kind of like, I guess we can say ending off our life in pandemic <laughs> series, where we're just gonna talk about some of the challenges we think would be in store for being an expat in 2020. Of course, we're expats here, living, and there are a couple of challenges which we think are pretty unique to expats, but also other people who have moved to a new city or moved to a new country, and dealing with the impacts of this pandemic do present its own challenges. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our other videos about being an expat in Ireland, pandemic related and not pandemic related, hopefully, soon. A lot more non-pandemic related. <laughs> yep. So, let's start. So right now, Ireland is proceeding with phase three, I think it is, of the rolling back of restrictions, or opening back up, if you will, from the pandemic. The interesting thing is that almost every country that we're following, because being expats from you know, Barbados and Austria, Everyone's opening or doing things or handling this pandemic with different sort of restrictions or openings. So the challenging thing is that you're usually, you know, since you're not physically going out there and meeting up with friends, well, in the earlier parts of the pandemic at least. So you kind of start feeling a mismatch with the groups you talk to. Because we had been Skyping and, you know, Zooming and whatever have you with our friends and family back at home a little bit more than the friends here in Ireland just because you know you have more people that you know back home and so that's kind of created a weird mismatch of you know your conversation because you can explain it best about Austria versus yeah Austria since it borders on to Italy and Austria and saw what was going on in Italy and how quickly the situation escalated they locked down kind of immediately so all of my friends and family were already like talking the lockdown talk while we are in Ireland we're still like we're in Ireland is this really gonna affect us is it gonna change anything so we're kind of always a step behind and of course also when they peeled back restrictions they started much much sooner in Austria and it took a lot longer to get the cases down and to get to flatten the curve as we were hearing everywhere um, in Ireland and they're a lot more reluctant reluctant and careful than Austria is so it's always a bit weird if friends are like so where did you go this weekend and we're like well nowhere because we're kind of still in a lockdownish situation and one of the second things that we realize is that over this time your interests might actually change now for example if you come to Ireland you've heard about the Emerald Isle the first thing you're thinking ooh it's almost like summer Yes, it is summer. There's been a lot of <laughs> Almost sun. like summer is what summer is in Ireland. Don't give people false expectations. Yeah, but the thing is, you're thinking about going outside, doing all these things, you know, um, outdoor, not really so much outdoor pubs, but, you know, the vibes that you would have wanted. But now, during the pandemic, you kind of had to be like, stay at home, etc. like that. And so, your activities and stuff you enjoy have kind of turned more introvert, more internalized. For example, I started playing a ton of video games again. Julia's been... Finally reading again. Finally some time to read books again. Especially for a week Caribbean month. Yes, and K-dramas. Lots of <laughs> K-dramas as well. She didn't want me to mention that part, but you know. One good thing about the pandemic, I discovered K-dramas. I didn't know they existed before. <laughs> yes, but because of these, you know, as the country start opening back up or you start interacting with your friends and family again, you might realize that you might have gotten a bit accustomed to the quieter lifestyle, so to speak. I know this is especially true of us, you know, we're slowly ramping back up to, you know, being more 
out there once the weather stays nice. It's kind of cloudy right now. I was hoping for some sunlight to tell y'all, oh, look at the sun. But maybe in 10 minutes. Yeah, that, that's how it goes. More Ireland weather stuff. Don't look at the weather for the entire week. Look at the weather for the next day because it won't be trustworthy. Another aspect that you probably find in a lot of cities like Dublin where rent is very expensive, so you tend to live in small spaces, is just that usually when you meet with friends you have to go to a pub, to a cafe, at least to a park or some sort of meeting area. And to be honest there aren't that many parks in Dublin or outdoor spaces within the city, to be fair. We're, we've been spoiled with other cities that we know and lived in. But it can be quite hard even now that the restrictions are loosened, but you're not exactly that is supposed, I think, to go over to other people's houses, especially if flats are very small and you're just going to be cramped in there like that, far away from two meters distance. So it makes it very hard as well, that even when restrictions loosen, to get out there and meet people. So for us in Ireland, the lockdown happened kind of suddenly, like we were expecting it, but then when it happened, it was quite suddenly, you've been working from home, so you've been transitioning into it slowly, but for me it was like, okay, everyone go home now and see you, I don't know when, pretty much. So we were thrown into the lockdown situation and being introverts, it wasn't, I guess, too hard to transition into not leaving the house because actually we kind of like it. <laughs> but what we also realized is it made us think a lot bit more inwards instead of thinking about where we could go and having experiences and sort of react to other things in the outside world that it still exists outside our tiny flat. It more turned sort of inwards. We started with random things like moving furniture and rethinking how we use the space to more like actual internal psychological thinking. We spent a lot of time talking. Well, we usually talk a lot, but <laughs> even more time talking and thinking and also kind of using the slowdown, or at least that's what it felt like, probably not for if you're a doctor or working in the healthcare sector, but for people who can easily work from home online and who have no problem with not going outside because they're introverts, it kind of made us think a lot more about the future, like what are things we want to do, so that's why we really started working hard on that course and to try and get the course out. And we've been thinking about other projects like that that we want to do. Yeah, most definitely. So I already think that from country to country, especially in how serious the lockdown measures were, you have some people where there's more of a, a zest, a feeling, an effort to be like, okay, I've been going about this all my life, etc. That, but maybe there's something new that you want to try and urge, a thing that you always want to do. Uh, we have a feeling that, especially for expats, that's a thing that's, you know, that um, more people are going to be like, willing to do if their next set of vacation oh my gosh i know like when travel starts again people are going to be like yeah i always wanted to go here i couldn't go on a plane for this long comfortably i'm going to that place and i think it's the same thing when it comes to jobs or money or anything you wanted to do really that you know it almost has been a shake to the system where you're going to be like now's the time after i recover a bit to then go and chase these things of course, the final one which I think a lot of people, especially expats, are thinking about are seeing friends and family. Close friends and family are usually living in another city or country and that's mostly what you do with most of your time off. Take your train, I don't think boat, but you know, flight, Ferries, maybe. ferry, flight, that's true, <laughs> you know, to go see them. But in the current situation, that still, even though, you know, flights are starting back and opening in most places from next month, it wouldn't just be the same. So I've had a lot of people who are sure, just in continental Europe, they may be able to, you know, head back home and see friends and loved ones. But for more further international travel, that might be difficult this year. Oh. Especially if you have to go through other countries because there isn't direct flights like to Barbados from Dublin. Right, yes, and you know, if um, you know, certain people are if need people from, you know, more COVID affected areas in, then that can definitely be a challenge. So, as an expat, 
already a person who loves to travel even if you're not using a holiday to go visit loved ones. Like for us usually that's something we, we really look forward to wear. Well, I, I guess, <laughs> um, the stereotypical Austrian overly planning everything being like not exactly we know a year in advance where we want to go, but I'll have all the information, everything researched and put together probably like half a year before. And we usually hype up the anticipation for our trips that way and get really excited for them. Except this year it's like half the year is over, we haven't really taken time off, eventually we will have to because in Ireland you do the 20 minimum days plus whatever extra days you get from the company you, you have to take off like you can carry some over but pretty much sooner or later we have to take vacation and we're still a bit torn what to do with it originally our plan was to finally go and see more of Ireland still kind of is the plan but we're not so sure like it's only I think from this week next week that we're allowed to leave the county so that we can actually go and for once leave County Dublin, like we finally wanted to, but we're still but unsure where to go with the amount of people that might be there, if stuff is open, public transport operating, so if you have any suggestions, if you live somewhere in the countryside in Ireland, you're like, out here is chill, not too many people, places are still open, you could get a hotel, let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah, sure, that should be fun. And also, you know, um, for other expats who usually head back home for cultural holidays, I know everybody's probably in the back of their mind thinking, how normal is Christmas going to be? That, that's, that's the big one. So, that, uh, even if you're having holidays or big birthdays, etc., that before, then that's one of the challenges about being an expat. Everyone who's within the same geographical reason, region, that's cool. But further afield, that's a bit of a challenge. In conclusion, now this isn't meant to be a downer video, you know, this is more about accepting some of the realities but also just knowing what to expect so you can deal with them. I'm sure that a lot of people, especially expats, would have been having feelings or thoughts like this and just wondering, hey, are there any other folks out there feeling like that? And we're here to say like, yes, yes, they are. And, you know, what we're going to do is not, you know, come at you with more pandemic stuff, but as stuff reopens, etc. Try to get more back to our socially distant summer. That's what, <laughs> that, that's what we're going to call it. Uh, so, of course, if you like the video, if you have any comments, please tippy-tappy type below. And, you know, don't forget to subscribe and write the course. Yes, feel free to check out the course if you're just now thinking about moving to Ireland. Lots of information there, all information there, so you don't have to do all the research yourself. Yep, I think there's still a discount code on it. Yeah, so do check that out. And until then, we'll see you very, very soon. Bis später. Bye.